Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and one comment that I see every once in a while is something along the lines of, oh, I really don't want to use assets in my game, I want to build everything myself from scratch, using assets feels like cheating, and I don't want people angry at me calling my game an asset flip. I see that kind of comment every once in a while, especially in my asset highlight or my asset review videos, so if you are the kind of person who has that kind of thoughts, let me tell you that thought is probably causing more harm than good. Now, there is a huge difference between using assets correctly and making an asset flip. I'm going to talk about that difference in a bit. So this video is all about games using assets, but in case you want to make those assets yourself, then one great place to start is with this excellent Blender 3D course. It's what I've been following and I've already managed to learn quite a lot, enough to make a mini game all with my own original assets. And that course is included as part of the Game Dev TV bundle with three courses that were hand selected by me to teach you everything related to game development. Learn all about Unity with the Unity 3D course, then learn how to make 3D models in Blender, and finally learn how to write good clean code using programming patterns. Check out the entire CodeMonkey Game Dev TV bundle with the link in the description. Okay, so back to the video. As for what gave me the idea for making a video on this topic, as you might know, I normally do a top 10 Steam Unity games list every month. So every month I go through all of the new releases, look at what games look interesting and pick 10 of them. Because of that, I essentially see tons and tons of games, and lately I've noticed more and more games on Steam that are being quite successful with sales and positive reviews, and I immediately noticed that they're using Cinti Studios assets. I've used their assets so much and they have such a signature style that it is immediately identifiable. For example, over here is No Plan B, which just came out in December. This one is a great looking SWAT tactics game. You set up your squad, you equip them and send them out on missions. Then you click and drag to draw the path where they will move and what actions they will take. It's a very clever design with some unique mechanics. So if you're like me and you can recognize Cinti assets, then you know some of these are from the gang pack, others from the heist pack, and probably some others. Now the question is, just looking at this trailer, what do you think about it? Personally, I really like SWAT tactics games, so this is immediately appealing to me. And even though I immediately identify the assets as being from an asset pack, that fact really does not cause me to have a negative image of the game at all. The only thing I care about is that it's mechanically interesting, the genre appeals to me, and it looks great. So my question to you, if you recognize the assets, did that cause a negative impression of the game? But regardless of what you or I think, the important thing is hearing what the players think. So for that, we can just go ahead and look at the reviews. So far, it has over 100 very positive reviews, and if you browse them, you really just see people that really love the game. And on top of that, some people also praise the visuals. Now I browsed all of the reviews and I could not find a single one that mentioned anything related to assets. So either that means that players did not recognize the assets, or it simply means that all the players want is a good game to play. So the question is simple, if this developer had taken the time to build their own custom 3D models, would that have made a better game? Now the answer will obviously depend on the 3D modeling skills of that developer, if the developer is comprised of people like myself with no 3D modeling skills, then really the only two possible scenarios is to either use assets or don't make the game. Like I said, I really like the concept of the game and I'm looking forward to playing it whenever I have the time, so I'm glad the developers chose to use assets rather than cancel their game idea. Let's look at another example that is making even heavier use of assets, so it's this one, Perfect Heist 2. This one you can immediately see it's using the Cinti Heist Pack, you might notice right away that this is exactly the heist pack demo scene. Personally, I would say this is right on the edge of acceptable. I think you should build your own scenes rather than using the included demo just straight up. But regardless of what I think, let's once again see what the players think. And once again, it's the same story. The reviews are really positive because the game itself is actually great. Again, I browsed all of the reviews and I could not find a single mention of any paid assets or anything. The game has interesting mechanics, works as expected, and plays really well. That's really all the players care about. How does the game play? Is it fun to play? Most of them really won't care how it was made as long as the final result is good. Here's another one, Shelter Manager. This one is clearly using assets from the Synthi Apocalypse pack, and once again, no mention of assets. All of the reviews are on the quality of the game itself. Some of them are just basically on how some players like the game and some don't. A recent example is Clown Film 2042. This one is obviously a joke on Battlefield 2042. This one seems to be based on the low poly shooter pack, which is a complete starting template. And then on top of that has some visual assets from the Synthi Battle Royale pack and the Cyberpunk pack. Again, for me, I would say this one is just on the edge of being acceptable due to using the demo scene straight up, but the players really don't care. The game is fun and they enjoy it. And with this one being such a timely joke, 
This one would simply not be possible to be made this quickly if the developer had built everything from scratch. So without assets, this game would simply not exist and these players would not be having fun. And there's many, many more examples. Here is one that looks like a mix between Crazy Taxi and Euro Truck Simulator. Once again, great reviews, the players love the game for how it plays and no one cares that these are paid assets. The concept is interesting and it plays well, that's all that matters. Then here is a multiplayer shooter with large scale encounters, and again, lots of players simply enjoying the game. Now all of this is not to say that you should do asset flips, absolutely not. Asset flips are absolutely bad and you should not do that. But let's clarify exactly what is an asset flip. If you buy a complete game template from the store, like for example this factory game template, if you just buy that and you just upload it to Steam without any changes, without adding anything to it, if so then that's an asset flip so don't do that, that's bad. However, if you are working on your own original game and you need some assets or some system to make your vision come to life, then that is not an asset flip and you should definitely do that. Even for example starting from a template like that one, if you use that as a starting point and you build upon it to make something completely different, you can add more items, more visuals, more mechanics, more of everything, at that point the final game is no longer an asset flip but rather your own original game idea that simply started from a template. It's the same thing for all of the projects that I'm making these videos. Feel free to download the project files and use them as base to build upon and build your own original games. So basically, if you have your own idea that you're trying to build, use whatever assets you need in order to bring that idea to life. What matters is really the final result, you don't get bonus points for building everything yourself, and you also don't get penalty points for using third-party assets. As long as the final game is great, that's really all that matters. Your players want to have fun, so go ahead and give them fun by any means necessary. So if you're the kind of person that has the kind of thoughts that I mentioned in the beginning, then hopefully this video helped you see how you can use assets correctly to improve your game. Don't be afraid to use every tool at your disposal to make your game ideas come to life. As long as you use them properly, your game will be better and your players will love you for it. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.